Guys, it's hot. Summer's starting to take over and some of my plants are thriving. Some of my plants are done. Let's go take a look around. So today I'm just going to do a few summer garden tasks and show you what's going on in the garden and give you a single seed challenge update as well. Um, today is in the mid 90s. It's about 90% humidity and it's been this way for several days now. Um, Wednesday it got up to 98 degrees on my son's birthday party. Good thing we had a big gigantic water slide in the yard and uh, my son, my oldest son runs a water slide business and donated to the cause for his little brother. What a good day. But heat man heat and combination of some diseases that have infected my garden are making my spring garden start to wind down right now and uh, i'll tell you about that right here is bare soil bare soil is not ever a good thing in the garden this is only bare because i'm going to plant this with corn and once it comes up i will be putting mulch on this garden look right here and you see deep mulch oak leaves and grass clippings these tomatillo plants are kind of sprawling now i'll cage them up soon but that deep mulch, you don't see any weeds there. While over here, you've got weeds. Almost every time there's bare soil, something wants to colonize it. You want the soil to be colonized by what you want to put in it. And to do that, you suppress the weeds with mulch. I have this blue corn that I soaked overnight in some water. And I'm just going to start plugging this in here. I'm going to plant it. Oh every six to eight inches or so and hopefully this uh, miniature variety will come up and give me some corn this year I'm gonna do a whole block because corn prefers to be planted in blocks it uh, pollinates better that way so planting about an inch deep this is pretty coarse soil right now. It's pretty dry and crumbly, but uh, we're getting tons of rain over the next couple of, over the whole next week, we're gonna get tons of rain. So this shouldn't have any trouble coming in contact with the soil. I'm gonna use the, the trick I like to use when sowing seed directly in the ground. To get good contact with the soil, I'm gonna sprinkle some potting mix over it that will help me to uh, ensure that I've got a good fluffy soil, especially considering how bad this uh, ground is, is crunched up because of the heat. And I'll just cover them up with that. corn is sown, just give this a little bit of a water, and then we got a week of rain ahead. Yeah. The next thing I'm going to have to do is get this tomatillo plant off the ground, and I have a plan for that. All right, so right here is a very troubled tomato plant. This plant is dying off from something. It looks like it has maybe a magnesium deficiency. But what's really happening here is called late blight. And I think that if you get close enough, you can see there's late blight and spider mites on here. This plant needs to come out before it infects others. So I'm gonna pull it up and I'm going to take it away, but I'm gonna harvest these three good fruits. I have actually received a pretty good harvest off of these, this particular plant, about 15 to 20 tomatoes, but I can't leave it in here. This is most definitely a disease, and it's a communicable disease among tomato plants. Well, you don't want to mess around with late blight. So I'm going to take this one down to the ground and remove the whole thing. And I'm not going to handle my other tomato plants now without uh, washing my hands. So I usually like to leave the roots behind, but when you've got a diseased plant, I like to at least pull the initial bit of roots out. All right. Now I can use that cage on my tomatillo plant. All right, now that I've removed that dangerous tomato plant, I've opened up some airflow here. I've got a little eggplant tucked back in there that really needs some space. Those lima beans are crowding it out. These lima beans are doing wonderful. Nothing has really bothered these, 
putting on lots of pods and I'm looking forward to harvesting. Uh, like I said, there's some pods right there. Like I said, when I made that trellis, this thing would come up and just cascade back down that trellis and that's what it's doing. I can see that some of my tomatoes here are finally starting to ripen up. Now that's exciting. Uh, those are pretty good sized tomatoes. I forgot the variety. I'd have to dig my uh, label out. I don't feel like getting down there. But uh, yeah, I'm happy about that. Over here though, look at these. I got tons of tomatoes in here coming in. This bush is uh, growing perfectly and I'm keeping it well maintained. I harvested an eggplant today off of my uh, eggplant there. My little pepper seedlings down there, I let them go without water today and they dry, they're, they're droopy, but they got a drink, they'll perk up. My uh, Brad's crazy cherry over here is putting on tons of fruit. I already took a nice uh, big handful of fruit off of it once. But uh, yeah, what always happens when it gets hot is the lower leaves start to give up and they yellow and drop off. You can just come in and prune that out and clear those off and that'll keep that tree healthy. Back here in the shade, I've got more big tomatoes coming in. That makes me happy. This is a pretty healthy plant. It's kind of shady back here in this little area, so I'll just trim the yellow leaves out. But summer, yeah, summer's definitely here. So we're in a rush now to get our harvest in of these crops. Let me show you my squash. That's powdery mildew and lots of it. But look under here, there's a gigantic squash down there. I'm gonna let that one grow until it's uh, mature enough to harvest seeds from. I like that variety. Once I pluck that one, this plant comes out, and uh, yeah, that's been a good squash this year. However, the squash are done. You can see here, late season squash plants are really ugly. You can see those stems where I've pruned are kind of gnarly looking, but uh, so far, no vine borers, but what I have got are, uh, what I have had is powdery mildew just coming in and and uh, destroying these things. And so you can see powdery mildew, I can't keep on top of it. Um, yeah, it's a natural thing. And these will put on a few more fruits for me. Uh, there's a big fruit over there on the ground. But uh, I need these to come out. I need these to come out because they're at the end of their life. I got what I needed. I had a bountiful harvest from these. So they'll come up. I've got a pepper here and a pepper there. I've got a pepper in the middle putting on fruit. And so that'll make room for those guys to go through the summer. Very little work that needs to go into the pole beans here. Now these beans are finally starting to put on some blossoms. I'll get a, a nice crop out of these and hopefully they'll tolerate the heat okay. The uh, mustard greens tolerate the heat okay and that's delicious, man. I made some of that the other day. It was outstanding. So that's a good heat loving crop as well. But right here, my uh, yard long beans are producing now and I've been harvesting these. And, uh, but they're turning a little yellow. I need to hit that with a little nitrogen. Look at this. See how white that is? That's powdery mildew on my cucumbers. Lots of it. Especially on this particular trellis over here. The other one, not so bad. But, uh, yeah, I've been trying to stay on top of that by spraying, but it's out of control. It's too humid here. This is a heat-loving cucumber variety. It's actually a melon. And I'm going to come spray again tomorrow and see if we can't arrest that. But I'm afraid I'm going to lose it because we have a week of rain coming and if that's just wet all the time that powdery mildew is going to spread faster than the plant can can uh, put on new leaves so i'm afraid i'm going to lose that uh, which is kind of sad but hey that's gardening if i lose it i'll plant something else all right here looking at the forecast 10 day forecast for my area we'll see castor glen at Rosetta station says we're going to have an entire week of thunderstorms coming up starting Sunday. Boy, that's awesome, man. That's great. When you have powdery mildew, you don't want to see 10 days of rain ahead because that's just going to spell doom for uh, my squash and my cooker bits. The sweet potatoes are doing fine. I need to get some mulch on those buckets there. Starting to climb on the trellis over here. This is a heat loving variety. I need to keep that out of my neighbor's yard there and keep it on in my yard. Yeah, see what I mean? It's already bigger than the bigger than the trellis. But we'll add another piece of hog wire to the top here. First tomatillo. Got one coming in there. Got one over here. So we're starting to get some fruit on the tomatillo. Little lanterns in there. They got a little berry inside. The, the fruit is actually inside that husk. Yeah, so we're starting to get some production here. But the garden will look a whole lot different during the summer. The summer is the least attractive garden 
in our area. It's going to be okra, and my okra is coming up in trays over there. It's going to be cowpeas, which kind of look like those guys there. And it's going to be ragged looking plants. Let me show you what our summers do to tomatoes. And look at that. Yeah, I do use miracle Grow from time to time on my fig trees. But look at these tomatoes. I've had to take out all these tomato plants. These are all my dwarfs and micro dwarfs. And it's only the dwarfs and micro dwarfs. And they're in containers. And because they're a combination of that they're in containers, they are smaller varieties that produce faster. Uh, they can't handle the heat. And so once we started getting up into the, the uh, 90s, they started getting really, really wilty. And once they were compromised, look who moved in. Spider mites. So we're going to have to deal with these. Spider mites can sweep through a garden and destroy it in one fell swoop. Once the plant is compromised, it's susceptible to all kinds of diseases like that. And so that plant is going to the trash, not even to compost. And it's going right now. On another note, the potatoes are looking wonderful. I'm starting to put on these beautiful flowers. These are my russet potatoes, indeterminates, and I've hilled them up all the way to the top. And I hope to get some spuds out of there because my red DeSoto determinate potatoes did not produce for me as I had hoped. Let me show you what I got. This is all I got out of my determinate potatoes. That's about three times as many seed potatoes. And I don't know how many pounds haven't weighed it. But on some of them, they have this potato scab disease which is unfortunate because we like to eat these uh, cooked and just cut up with the skin now I'll have to cut these parts off the worst offenders I've thrown out but there's still some in here it's a real unsightly disease like that so yeah these didn't do so well um, I probably will not repeat a determinate potato again and I will do indeterminate it's the kind you have to hill up so I'll need to identify a variety that grows well here if the russets that are currently growing do well, well, I'll just stick to those. That's too bad. I really like these red potatoes and I had hoped they'd done well. There are plenty of vegetables and fruits coming out of the garden. Uh, all of this is from the garden. Uh, these two squashes are from the garden. Yeah, so we've got plenty of, plenty of food coming from the garden. Here's a yellow brandy wine waiting to fully ripen. Yeah, so it's not all bad news. All right, folks, here's my single seed challenge, and it's looking really sad. It is just too hot right now for some of these to grow. And I've been losing a lot of tomatoes that are potted tomatoes because there's just too much fluctuation in a potted plant when the temperatures are in the upper 90s, which we have. It's, a, it's 98 today. And these plants just don't like to be in pots when it's that hot. So... It set some fruit. I'm still having a little bit of blossom end rot, but here's a nice healthy fruit right here that I'm hoping will ripen up and I'll get to taste it. Look at that, it's a beautiful fruit, isn't it? This is a uh, Black Beauty from, it's a Russian variety. And you can see the heat's just really making it suffer. And I've been pruning it and keeping it and tending it really well. It's got some nice growth up top still. So I may just, I may just have to prune the dead stuff off and see what happens, but yeah, my tomatoes are certainly the ones in pots having trouble. You can tell the micros and micro dwarfs uh, are just about done. In fact, I've taken some out and I found some spider mites on one of them. What I did find is there's a carrot growing right there. So I wonder what kind that's going to be. So yeah, that's my uh, single seed challenge. You can see it, it, it is putting on fruit, but it's still blossom end rot on some of them. Like that one, so we'll take that off. These up here are doing yeah gonna have some blossom in rot and that's because it's so hot and the water fluctuation in that pot is too extreme if you take a look at the tomatoes that are in the ground they're doing fine as i think back on all that we've done this spring um, it's really actually amazing to go and look at pictures and i encourage you like um like gardener scott in his monday uh, morning live stream either this week or last week he encouraged us all to take pictures of our garden because when you get frustrated and nothing's growing and it's taking forever for your tomatoes to ripen if you take pictures and document and journal your garden along the way um, then you can just go back through your phone and look at the pictures and say wow 
and compare it to the plant and say, wow, it's really growing, it's working, it's actually doing something. Um, for Gardener Scott, for people like me, for you, if you have a YouTube channel and you garden, uh, our YouTube channels are our garden journal. I can go back and look at things and I go back and see how we uh, transitioned from winter to spring. And the winter to spring transition was also a, a little bit uh, a gradual transition for us, although more dramatic than the spring to summer transition will be. And I look back on those pictures and see Sam and I working in the garden and doing the flame weeding and seeing a, a bare patch of soil. And now today it's a jungle and that really brings me joy. So even when we have the good, when we have the bad, when we have the ugly, when we have diseases, these are just gardening challenges. They come along. That's what happens when you grow a garden. You're going to get these things. You're going to face them and you shouldn't let them frustrate you. Let them be learning experiences. Uh, let them be opportunities to try to remedy those situations. And if you fail, hey, you fail. You fail forward. Pull those plants out. Start over. Grow something new. Um, if you don't have a long growing season and you can't start growing something new for a, a whole, you know, another season, well, take advantage of that time to improve your soil. You know, sheet mulch on your soil and throw some cardboard down and some mulch on top and make that better soil. You can always be improving. You can always be doing something good in your garden. So overall, we have blessings like this little segment right here. And we have challenges like the cucumbers over there. But uh, overall, I count myself a blessed man. Need to cut the grass and do that tomorrow too. Somebody actually got into me, onto me in my comment section for not cutting my grass in the backyard. And you know what? Come cut my grass if you want to, but I do it when I can and when I want to. It's my backyard, not yours. So uh, there it is. Summer, transitioning to summer. This garden will look a whole lot different come the summer. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. We have an Instagram account. Follow us on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening there. And we have a Facebook page where you can actually send me pictures and ask me questions. I try to get to them. Sometimes, guys, I just don't get to them in time. There's so many people asking questions, but I'll try, okay? And if you send me a picture, you got a big enough problem, um, I'll try to answer it if I can. So thank you for joining us today. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit the bell to be notified, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening!